You, do you know, Izzy, you know how old this, this tree is? Uh, dinosaur age? Like 300 years old. This is incredible. This is one of the things about New Braunfels. I really love, We're so connected to nature. If you guys are watching us right now, you're probably thinking about moving to New Braunfels. And I was in your same shoes about four years ago, almost four years ago right now, before I eventually decided to move to New Braunfels. So today, I'm gonna give you my four year, my almost four year update on living in New Braunfels and what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And did I make a mistake moving here? And am I gonna stay here? or am I gonna move back? And I'm gonna let you know that at the end of this video. Meantime, we're gonna talk about the most talked about questions that you guys tend to talk about and tend to ask about, and that is the weather. Is it too hot here? What about what's the lifestyle like? What's the cost of living like? What about taxes and the schools? So right off the bat, guys, it was not easy for me to move to the New Braunfels area, to move to New Braunfels almost four years ago, because I left behind my mom and my dad my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, my aunts, my uncles, all from the Midwest, all from Michigan, and all the friends I accumulated over the years. So it wasn't an easy thing, and it's not an easy thing to this day because I go back every other month, right? And, and it's, it's, it can be very costly, right? Every time I go back, and it's not easy, right? When you're around family, you wanna be around them even more. So. I don't like that part, and if you're leaving family to come to New Braunfels, then that's something that you have to be aware of. It could be a hard transition for you, especially if, let's say, you have grandchildren and you're leaving the grandchildren behind or the grandchildren are moving to New Braunfels. That transition may be difficult. So why the heck, then, would I move here to New Braunfels? I'm leaving all of that behind. Who would do that? Well, my wife is from New Braunfels. Uh, we, I started coming to New Braunfels about 15 years ago before we got married the following year. Uh, so it's not as if I just fell into New Braunfels four years ago, I've been coming for the last 15 years. She's from here. When we got married, she moved to Michigan to be with me, but then her parents got sick and being the sole caretaker, she moved back to take care of her parents before they passed. That took a toll on her health. So I eventually decided to move to New Braunfels. So that's my story. And I'm gonna tell you right now, kind of look around, nobody really had to twist my arm to be here. I mean, I'm from the Midwest where it snows and it's cold half the year. So I'm welcoming this weather, sunshine almost year round. So let's talk about that. One of the most talked about <laughs> topics for people moving here. Hey Rod, is it too humid there? Is it too hot? Well, I'm gonna tell you, my first trip to New Braunfels 15 years ago, if you've seen Frosty the Snowman, that was me. You know, when Frosty walked in to try to get his head, I think that's how the cartoon went, and, and, and the greenhouse, and he melted, that was me at Landa Park. It was during the summer. I looked at my, my soon-to-be wife, and I said, this is just this is too much. So when I, when I got here, I was a little bit more acclimated to it, but when I, my first year here, it felt great because I was coming from the Midwest, so my, my blood was thinning at that point, all right? So the next summer, I turned to my wife and I said, you know, why is it so hot? She said, it's not, it's the same as it was last year. So it took me about a year to get acclimated to the weather in New Braunfels in Texas before I started complaining about it. And then here comes the snowstorm, the stuff that I thought that I left behind, the snow, the ice, the cold, all in New Braunfels for one week, February 2021, but what was most impressive to me, guys, about that week is the state of Texas and the governor here and the leaders here, there's no infrastructure to plow that snow, right? There's no tools like there is in the Midwest. We had a storm on a Monday, and by Friday morning, it was sunny out again, but more importantly, we didn't have to boil our water anymore. The power was fine. In fact, during that process, guys, we we did not, we hardly went without electricity. We had electricity for most of those five days. So credit to Texas and the governor for that quick turnaround. Fast forward a couple months after the snowstorm and we got like monsoon rains in April and May. And if you were building a house, good luck, right? Especially if you needed a poor foundation because that wasn't getting done. So we had two straight months, it seemed, of rain. And then eventually the sun came out. And then this year, 
right? This year, we had what seemed like three straight months of triple digit weather where the feels like is well into the hundreds and it's hot, okay? So it is hot in New Braunfels. It's not humid like Houston. Let's, let's kind of clear that up right now. It's humid in New Braunfels in the morning, like four or five in the morning. Once the sun comes up, and this is my experience because I get up early in the morning, I work out, so it's more humid at that time. But once the sun comes up, it breaks up the clouds and the humidity drops. Humidity during the day can be anywhere from uh, anywhere from 15 to 30 percent. And that's nothing, guys, compared to the Midwest. I'm telling you, living around lakes and even in Houston, when you live near an ocean, that's nothing. So it's not humid, but it is hot here. The average temperature in New Braunfels is around 96 degrees during the summer. In the winter, it's around 66 degrees. So, but the weather, guys, the weather, thank God, right? It leads to, it leads to so many other things in New Braunfels. And let's get into that. It leads to our awesome ultra outdoor active lifestyle. We're talking about lifestyle right now. I love our parks. Well, number one, because you're always outside and you're under the sun. We have two major parks in New Braunfels. One is east of I-35. It's called Fisher Park. And at Fisher Park, there are walking trails. Or you can run on them. You can bike on them. There's a place you can fish as well. There's a huge splash pad for the kids. Uh, there's an area for, there's a butterfly garden and a sandbox as well. And, and Fisher Park is neat because when you go there, you're about eight, 900 feet above what is that called? Sea level. Uh, so if you stand at a certain place, you'll be able to see into the city. So that's Fisher Park. Landa Park, where we host most of our videos and where we're standing right now, is my personal favorite because of all of the mature trees. That's one of the reasons. So when it's really hot, when I come here, I can just duck under the, the trees for shade and I love it. But there is so much here. It's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a whole lot of people. I'm not sure if we can pan this way or that way, but you can see people walking in the park all the time. Uh, you can run here, you can bike here. There's a watering hole here. There's a miniature train here for kids. There's Lake Landa behind us where you can paddle boat. And there's a golf course as well next to us. There's playgrounds for the kids and just a whole lot to do here. There's also, guys, at Landa Park, there's a hiking trail. And it's a beginner's, beginner's hiking trail. It's nothing too complicated. So it's something that you, know, you and the family can, can do. And I actually do from, from time to time. So Landa Park overall, and don't forget the deer. The deer are always out here at Landa Park. And not just because it's a park, there are no natural predators uh, for deer in New Braunfels. And that's why you'll see them hanging out at the park or maybe near businesses or on your front lawn of your residence. So we have two great parks here in New Braunfels. We also have, maybe you didn't know this, maybe you do, two awesome rivers, recreational rivers, really popular, especially during the summer. There is the Colmel River, which runs about two and a half miles all within the city limits. It is the shortest river in the state of Texas, but arguably the most fun river in the state of Texas, especially with tubers in the summer. Thousands turn out every weekend. It takes about three hours to float. My favorite part of the river is that, that tube chute. It is absolutely, I love going down that several times. So there's the Comel River, it's more laid back, and then there's the Guadalupe River, which is more my jam because it's more action, has rapids, you can kayak, well, we actually saw quite a few tubers this summer, okay? And you can also, if you take a dip in the water, you can also swim in the water as well. What's interesting about the Comel is the Comel is actually fed from the uh, Edwards Aquifer, which is a huge underwater basin, the largest here in New Braunfels. So a lot of the water here is, is fresh water, spring-fed water, as it is at our lake, at our popular lake in Canyon Lake. It's called Canyon Lake. And that is limestone bottom, so that water tends to be warmer. We actually jumped into it this summer, like 82 degrees, a little bit warmer. At Canyon Lake, bring all your water toys, right? Your boats, we jet skied. Uh, you can swim, you can dive off rocks, uh, you can fish. Uh, you can probably, I've seen people snorkel there, so lots to do. And let's not forget about, this is fun guys, Schlitterbahn. <laughs> if you haven't been there, if you go there, Plan to get there early so you can beat the crowd. See how it looks when you beat the crowds? You're the first in line and you have to make a mad dash. 
they don't let you run, but you can walk really fast. We tried the Master Blaster and it was just getting up there was a workout for me, but it's fun because you go on these slides and rides and boogie boarding and all kinds of things, you get wet. I love it because you're out in the sun and you dry up really quickly. All right, so I mentioned all of these places, which I love, they're so relaxing, they're fun to do. But truth be told, my Zen place here in New Braunfels is a gym. But it's not to me just any, any old gym. It's called Das Rec, and that's a city run, guys. This is a city run recreational center. It's, it's cheap. It's like for a single person, I think it's between 20 and 30. For a family, it might be 60 or 70. But it's got all this stuff in it. You can swim there, which is my thing. You can do free weights, you can do machines. There's cardio with the treadmills. There are classes, you can flip tires. They've got an outdoor area. They have pickleball, they have basketball. So this place is all encompassing under one roof. I love it, that's how I start my days. I see a lot of people there in the morning. So DOS Rec, believe it or not, is my, is my sanctuary. The one thing I never say living in New Braunfels is that I'm bored because there's always something to do and see, not just on the weekends, not just during the holidays, but really throughout the entire year. And guys, we're so super close to San Antonio, about a 30 minute drive. Austin's about 40, 45 minutes away. And we're relatively close to Bernie and Fredericksburg, our two hill country darlings. But really, we're at the main plaza right now in downtown New Braunfels. And guys, this is a magnet for so many of our events in New Braunfels year round. We have the, my favorite, the Christmas tree lighting. It's such a, elicits such warm feelings. Uh, that's in November. We have Day of the Dead. End of October, we have the Comal County Parade. Uh, and so, and we have also the 4th of July Parade. And both those parades start downtown and wrap around the plaza. Uh, there's Wassel Fest. So I love these events. We have the Farmer's Market not, not too far from here. I love these events because I'd like to be out and about with people. I like to engage with people. So if you're somebody who's social and you know you like to talk to people, this is definitely the place for you. If you're more introvert, then maybe it's not the place for you. But we can't forget our granddaddy of all events, and that's not too far, just down the way near Landa Park is Worst Fest. And that's the first, not the first 10 days, but 10 days in November every year and it came back last year after a two-year break and it came back with a vengeance all kinds of people turned out record crowds uh, music it's a celebration of our german heritage or some like to call it a celebration of beer and sausage but nonetheless it's a fun time really for the entire family one of the things i really love about living in new braunfels is the intangible feeling and i think a lot of you feel this too if you live here or you visited here it's knowing that you're in an area, especially downtown New Braunfels and our historic district of Green, where it feels like you're walking, taking a step back in time, like you're in a Hallmark <laughs> Channel movie. It's just that feeling like you get that because we date back to 1845 here. Many of these buildings are well over 100, 130, 140 years old. And several of the buildings date back to 1845 when New Braunfels was founded by a German prince. So it's that feeling well-preserved area here and in green. And guys, this is done on purpose by the city. I, I rave about our city planners because can't really find this anywhere else. Selling out to more modern things, not done here. The city keeps a cap, keeps a bubble. All of these shops down here, save the banks, are mom and pop shops. So people you might see in the neighborhood and it's authentic New Braunfels. The same thing in green. All the corporations and franchises try to get, try to penetrate downtown New Braunfels or green, they can't. City says, we got a place for you. It's called Creekside. So all that corporate franchise stuff is directed out there. But that's one of the things I really love about New Braunfels is that all these, both these areas, downtown and green, are super hyper local throwback taking a step back in time places and people like that feeling because life just slows down i love that as well in fact i will try my hardest to go out of my way to drive through downtown new braunfels just to drive around the 150 year old plus traffic circle 
and to see what's going on here. And if I'm hitting 306 on the other side of New Braunfels, I'll cut through our historic district of green just to see what's going on there. So we're adding all of these events and activities and we're adding more traffic as well. It's a natural thing. Something, you know, nobody really likes increased traffic and you'd like to keep things small and compact and you don't have to worry about planning your days around traffic. Uh, and it's not just downtown, but it's really all over town. There are Creekside shopping along 35. It's really picked up here in New Braunfels the last year, year and a half with so many people moving here. But if you guys are from a, a larger, larger metro area like myself, you're probably looking at this and saying, you know what? That's not traffic. What are you talking about? But wait, you guys, if you move here, wait one year and see what your opinion or reaction is at that point. But look, the great thing is, is that people love this place for the same reasons that I do, for the same reasons that you do and that's why so many people come back either to visit or they they come here and they never leave so traffic has picked up not only in the downtown area but around town but it's really hard to find that as a con because there's so much going on there's so many people coming here moving here visiting here because there's so much to do and to see so you add all of our events and activities guys add to that our live music scene not just in our historic district of green but that's a big part of it but all around town all around new braunfels at events at restaurants at bars we even have live music this is what i love at the farmers market in downtown new braunfels every saturday and we have an amphitheater here in new braunfels that draws huge names legendary names we actually went to go see willie nelson this past summer at the Whitewater Amphitheater. And guys, at 90 years old, this guy can still kick it. So you can have all the events and activities going on. You can have the rivers and the parks, but what really clinches it for me living in New Braunfels is the people who live here. So down to earth, so genuine, so authentic, so friendly. My first dose of residents in New Braunfels was during the pandemic. And that's when I saw people, neighbors helping neighbors, and, and an entire community here in New Braunfels lifting the business community to make sure that they kept their doors open during one of the most challenging times in, in recent memory. My level of how friendly people are, it just ratcheted up a notch when I reached out to the owner of Meglin's Bakery here in New Braunfels and I asked him, it was during the pandemic, and I said, hey, I'd like to do a, a video on, on your business oldest bakery in the state of Texas and he said this is the only the second family to own this place and you know since the 1800s he said yeah come on in this guy didn't know me from Adam and yet he, he stood with me and spoke with me for a good 30 minutes and he gave me access to his entire bakery his employees are so friendly so I mean like I said he didn't know me from Adam yet he trusted me he embraced me and, and that's the way it is here in New Braunfels. People don't care what you look like. They don't care where you come from. They just, they, the residents, the locals here, and the people who move here, they embrace you like your family. Being a tourist town, so many of our jobs are service related, like restaurants, and many of our restaurants in downtown New Braunfels and really throughout New Braunfels reflect our German and Hispanic heritages and also our Texas heritage of you know, brisket and ribs. But see, this is the, the con for me living in New Braunfels. I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. I don't eat ribs. I don't eat brisket. So it's, it's a challenge. I eat seafood. Thank God, I eat tuna and seafood and black beans. But for selection, I actually have to drive to San Antonio for like, if I want chicken that's kosher, I have to drive to San Antonio 45 minutes away. So that's just me. So if you're not a heavy meat person, you may want to spend more time at home cooking. But hey, if you're fine with it, this is going to be your jam. I just wish we had more selection in restaurants and grocery stores in New Braunfels. I, I love HEB. I love that place. It's so clean, so friendly. But, you know, having a Trader Joe's or Whole Foods it doesn't hurt competition and you have more selection. One of the questions we get a lot is, what does it cost to live in New Braunfels? And of course, there's a lot of factors in cost of living. Housing is the biggest factor in cost of living, but there are other factors as well. 
Gas, transportation, right now gas here in New Braunfels is just under $3 a gallon. That's as of September 2022, so maybe it'll come down more. Other factors include utilities and grocery bills. So we threw this question out to a local Facebook group and say, how much on average more are you paying for your grocery bill and utility bill? And some people are coming up, they're paying $100 to $400 extra every month in groceries and two to $400 extra in utilities. So that's just the last year, year and a half, two years. So utility prices have gone up and also grocery bills has gone up. Of course, guys, that's gonna depend on the size of your family. So not everyone's gonna be paying between two and $400 extra a month in utilities and groceries. And it depends on the size of your house as well. The biggest factor in cost of living is housing. And in New Braunfels, the median price of a home in March 2020 was around 245. Right now it's close to $400,000. So prices, home prices have gone up here in the hill country. So those prices I just told you about near 400,000 are in 78130 within the city limits. Hill country, New Braunfels, that price is going to be closer to 675 because well, you're paying for more, you have more house and you have more land as well. Right now, New Braunfels, really the past 12 years, means new construction. There's been an explosion here since 2010. We were at 57,000 population, and today we're closer to 100,000 or just over 100,000. So all kinds of record residential permits coming from the city, all kinds of new developments and new homes popping up everywhere. But builders right now, because of where interest rates are, are offering all kinds of incentives to entice buyers to purchase homes. Especially the climate we're in right now, builders are just slashing prices off the original listing price, knocking some thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars to entice buyers. They're also enticing buyers with incentives right now. And I think that's gonna continue throughout the fourth quarter because interest rates continue to rise. But here's the interesting thing about the housing market here. Even though we have higher interest rates and fewer buyers in the marketplace right now, home values in New Braunfels continue to increase. Not at the levels we were at last year, but still increasing. Now the downside to increase home values is increased taxes. So you're paying more taxes right now. Property taxes we have here in New Braunfels, you may not be used to it or at some smaller scale if you're coming from let's say California, where you're used to paying next to nothing in property taxes. The average property tax here is New Braunfels is 2.21, 2.22 in the Hill Country. It's less, but here's the thing. We don't pay state income tax and we have homestead exemptions in Texas. So you can get a homestead exemption to help really with your taxes if you're over 65 or if you're a disabled veteran just a bunch of different homestead exemptions. So make sure you look into that if you're thinking about buying a house here. Also guys, if you live in New Braunfels within the boundaries of one of our school districts, Comel Independent School District, you get an additional 20% homestead exemption toward your home and obviously to help you with taxes. So that's something to keep in mind. So Texas values are increasing here but we're also very tax friendly. So let's talk about our schools. The one thing I like about New Braunfels is that we have private schools and public schools. We have two different public school districts. We just talked about Comel Independent School District. Comel Independent School District is rated an A by the state. That's for student achievement and student progress. We also have New Braunfels Independent School District serving about 9,000, 10,000 students. New Braunfels ISD rates a B by the state, and that's the same thing, student progress, student achievement. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Go to these two sites if you wanna dig deeper into the schools here, especially if you're considering moving here, where you wanna be, where you want your children to be. Go to niche.com or greatschools.org. What's great about those websites is that they'll give you not only the grades for overall district, but they'll give you the individual school grades and bonus, you get to see parent comments on those websites as well. So great schools, tax friendly, great amenities. We've got two great rivers. We've got award-winning parks, super friendly people, hill country, great restaurants, just a great vibe. It feels like you're stepping back in a time. So am I gonna 
leave New Braunfels or am I going to stay here? I think it's, <laughs> it's safe to say I'm going to stay here. What about you guys? Are you thinking about maybe moving to New Braunfels? If that's the case, let me know. I'd love to be your real estate resource of choice. You can email me, you can call me, or you can shoot me a text. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.